ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports everybody. Our ladies national basketball team all settled in Suriname going through final practices as they prepare to hit the court for the FIBA Women's Caribbean Cup. The Bahamas has been placed in Group A with Cuba, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the host in Group B, the Dominican Republic, Barbados and Guyana. The Bahamas tips off play Sunday against Cuba. The first and second place teams from each group advance to the semifinals. The top two teams qualify for the FIBA America Cup 2021 qualifiers that they begin in September. Our women's national volleyball team getting ready for the Caribbean Championships in Suriname. They will be looking to improve on their sixth place finish from the last edition. We've had a really short time to prepare, but I think going forward, um, we will do great. Um, we haven't had much time to get a chemistry or whatever, but we'll be okay. All we gotta do is stick together and stick to the game plan. I think our sh the strength of this team is our defense. However, I think our weakness is going to be um, our chemistry. Like I said, we haven't had much time to play together as a team, but hopefully it comes together once we get there in Suriname. Our biggest um, rivalry, I would say, is Trinidad. We always have a game plan against them, so hopefully this time around it works. They are, they are the number one team in the Caribbean. This time around, we hope to be the place at least third. That is our goal, and moving forward, you know, we place, hope to come first, actually. Our men's national volleyball team also getting ready for the Caribbean Championships in Suriname. And so far, practice sessions have been up and down. I don't want them to come back, cut the water, shut up. Oh, we could do this, we could do that. Because we have all the keys and the puzzles right here. It's just a matter of working out. Practices could be ramped up a little bit. Uh, but I mean, in general, we've been practicing for the senior men and along with the under 23 boys. So. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a learning curve there, you know, um, just in terms of uh, the, maybe the skill level between the under 23 and the senior men. So I would say that that's probably a reason why practice might not have had the level of intensity. But I mean, you see it in spurts, uh, which has been awesome. Um, you see the potential that the team has, not only for the current, but move forward, um, which is pretty awesome because uh, in the past, it seems as though we might not have had as good of a future as we had you know, maybe planned on having. So now coming back, and maybe we, even though we've had a few down practices, I think we'll be fine moving forward. It's ample time. The, the, the problem is practice facilities. You know, to use the candlelight, it costs us X, Y, Z dollars per night. Then DW Davis is another venue. They have exams. So as long as we can get the training facilities, we should be okay. Byron Ferguson is one of the professional players on our men's national volleyball team. He spoke about the transition from playing overseas to coming home and representing the country. This year coming up will be my eighth year overseas. And uh, it's difficult because, you know, the organization isn't the same, the level of play isn't the same, but that's where I have to step up and try to get the other guys at that level and our practices will be better too. And being a professional player, Ferguson also spoke about how it went for him this past season. We lost in the first round of playoffs, um, but I played in the final of the Greek Cup this year, so this has been my second final. I played in the final when I was in Greece two years ago as well. Um, it was a successful season for me. I was able to stay healthy, and you know, I'm looking forward to next year. Like Ferguson, Rajal Moxie is also playing overseas. He just finished up his eligibility at the University of Charleston. I'm the type of player that I don't. I, I play with heart, but more than that, um, I play to win all the time. Uh, and so I don't really care who's playing the next side of the court, whether it's an elementary team, whether it's a Division One team. So moving from independent to Division One, you have a problem with it. Uh, the good thing about it, though, is that when you start playing Division One, you play top tier teams all the time. So our conference consisted of um, Penn State, George Mason, Harvard, you know, Princeton. I can name a few others, but. Uh, it was, it was a great opportunity in my career. I had, I had um, several injuries throughout my career. Um, unfortunately, I had um, an injury that ended my season early this year, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, I was captain of the team for the, for the four years that I was there, and I thought we did pretty well. The Bahamas Baseball Association's Andrew Rogers Jr. Nationals all set for next week in Grand Bahama. The Bahamas Olympic Committee fully on board. Hundreds of young, talented young men will be given an opportunity to participate in the sport of baseball. 
the opportunities that, that exist in baseball are just phenomenal. Be it professional ranks, be it college, be it high school, we welcome those opportunities for the exposure of our youth, particularly our young men. And so I just want, on behalf of the Bahamas Olympic Committee, to thank the Bahamas Baseball Association for inviting us to be a part of this magnificent event. I'd really thank the executive for the hard work and the dedication uh, they uh, place in baseball in leading the youth in our country. Kerry Cartwright has been playing well on the pro tennis circuit so far this year, despite funding issues. But while addressing a reception for our Davis Cup team, Secretary of the Bahamas Olympic Committee, Deron Donaldson, said that may soon be a thing of the past for Kerry and others. Everyone wants emphasis on their particular area, male or female. However, we, we're doing our very best to work with all the federations, including the BLTA. The BLTA has submitted female names and male names for Olympic Solidarity funding. It's similar to like a subvention, but it's funded by, by the IOC through us, the NOC. And so, yeah, Kerry was one of the names submitted by the BLTA. And hopefully she's been doing really well out there on the tour, playing doubles and being successful, and I think even winning a tournament and also doing well in her singles as well. So we look, it looks favorable for her to get, you know, probably the funding, and hopefully this can help her out. And we would love for this to have tennis back in the Olympics. And if we have to start now with female being in the Olympics, then we're good with that. But we want the sport back in the Olympic light. And that will do it for sports. Stay tuned. The Bahamas Tonight comes back after the break.